Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. Since the beginning of this year, I really have not purchased a lot of new plants, nor have I been on the hunt for new plants as much as I used to be in the past. You know, I'm not really in that same mentality of trying to find the next rare plant. I think that a lot of people are feeling similar things. Plant burnout might be contributing to that, or honestly, at a certain point, you have kind of a limit as to how many plants you can really care for, be that because of space or capacity, that sort of thing. Now, all that being said, because I haven't been devoting as much energy to finding new plants, I found a deeper appreciation for the plants that are already in my collection. And now more than ever, I've been actually really, really loving my common plants that I think that I used to overlook more than I do now. In general, I've reframed the way that I think about plants. I'm not really looking at them through the lens of what's rare versus common anymore like I used to. I think when I first started this YouTube channel, I felt this burden to find rare plants that were exciting because I thought that that's what people wanted to talk about. That's what people wanted to watch was content about rare plants and expensive plants, which I think is still true to an extent, and people I think still probably do enjoy plant hauls and that sort of thing. But in general, I've sensed the plant culture settling into a deeper appreciation for the plants that started it all. <laughs> There's a universal sense of nostalgia to the plants I'm about to talk about, I think. So all that to say, you saw the title of the video. This is about my favorite common plants in my collection. And I'm using the term common here just for the sake of, I think we all kind of know what we're talking about. I think there once was a time when I thought of common as less than, but the way that I define common for the sake of this video is just that these are plants that I have repeatedly seen be accessible and affordable across the board, generally in the United States. I don't really know what it's like overseas or anything like that, but I've seen these plants in my own local garden centers, in my own big box stores that are local to me, but I've also seen them online and on other plant shopping videos, that sort of thing. Obviously, as a disclaimer, I don't know what's common in your area, but I feel like these plants are generally regarded as fairly accessible, fairly affordable, fairly easy to find if you're trying to find them. That was kind of a long intro, but let's get into the plants. This is my Alocasia dragon scale. As a general rule, I think I tend to see quite a lot of Alocasia represented in big box stores, but if I'm being honest, I definitely don't like all of them. But clearly, obviously, the Alocasia dragon scale is one that I do love. So if you're able to get one, honestly, I think it's fantastic. As far as Alocasia go, it has been pretty down to earth and easy to take care of. Sometimes Alocasia are not cooperative. But this one, I think of all of my alocasia, this one's probably the toughest one that I own. I have it in ambient humidity. It gets decent light, but it's nothing crazy. It is in a self-watering pot, which I believe does contribute to its happiness. But I mean, look at the look of it, right? It has such cool looking leaves. Like, look at that definition. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's true to its name. It certainly looks like a dragon scale. The texture of the leaf is really cool as well. And just some of those deep colors that you can get from it. I just love it. I think it's the coolest. If you're finding yourself intimidated by alocasia, definitely try out the dragon scale. Test it out. It's honestly pretty low risk because I've seen these guys for very affordable prices. I think at one point they were less common than they are today, but nowadays I see them all over the place all the time. This is my Monstera adansonii. This is another one of those plants that honestly is ubiquitous. <laughs> I feel like this plant almost always winds up on lists like this where it's like my favorite common plants. And for good reason because it's honestly a very unique plant and sometimes I think that we forget how cool this plant is because you know you see it everywhere and it's just like yeah whatever but honestly I'm telling you when people come over to my house that aren't plant people you know they might remark generally on my plants and say oh yeah you have lots of plants in your house that's kind of cool but the plant that they actually gravitate to and specifically mention is usually the Monstera adansonii. Like this is the plant that non-plant people like the most. And they're like, this plant has holes in its leaves. What's up with that? Please explain how that works. And I remember this was one of the first plants that really caught my eye when I first started getting into houseplants as well. I'm so happy to finally have an adansonii 
that's happy again in my collection because I went through a few different phases of trying to grow this up a wooden pole. Uh, I also had it trailing and kind of climbing up the wall a little bit, but my cats knocked that one down. So I had to like propagate it and start it over again. So, so I'm honestly just so relieved to have this plant happy in my collection again, because I feel like it adds so much. And honestly, it's pretty easy to take care of, especially compared to like the more rare plants in my collection that, you know, they have more needs. Whereas in general, I'd say most of these, if not all of these, like more common plants are also generally easier to keep alive. They're not going to be as needy as your other plants that are growing at moss poles and whatnot. <laughs> Although you can certainly grow the Monstera adansonii up a pole, which is another thing that I really like about it is its versatility. I think this plant looks really good, both trailing and climbing, or you can try to keep it a little bit more bushy. There's a lot of versatility here for how you can display it in your home. So yeah, I love this plant. I think everyone knows about it in general, unless you're new to plants, in which case, welcome to the family. <laughs> this is a really good option for you. Just look, I love it so much. It's such a fun, fun plant. This is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, and this is actually the only Hoya on this list, I think. And that's not because Hoya aren't necessarily common. I think for me personally, I have not seen a lot of Hoya in big box stores like in my area. So in my experience, Hoya have been a little bit more challenging to find. But of all the Hoya that are more common, like Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess and Hoya Curtisii. I think those are two other Hoyas that I tend to see a lot, like at Lowe's and stuff. This right here, far and away, is my favorite common Hoya. I have been gushing a lot about this plant lately on my channel, so I'm gonna spare you from talking about it for ever. <laughs> but quite simply, this plant is very easy to take care of and I love the way that it looks and I love the way that it grows. Just let's take a moment. There's so much variability in the leaves and I just think that it's such a gorgeous plant. I mean, there's not much I can say about it other than that, to be quite honest with you. It's a very consistent grower. I have it in an east facing window and it seems very happy with that. So if you've been considering getting this plant or you don't have this plant, but you see it at a big box store or whatever for a very affordable price, I definitely recommend it. This is my Spathophyllum or Peace Lily Domino or Domino Peace Lily. <laughs> now, Peace Lilies in general are so ubiquitous in plant stores, particularly big box stores. I mean, that's one of the plants I can almost guarantee you're going to find. Now, you don't always see the Domino Peace Lily, which is this kind that is variegated and has a little bit more texture to the leaves. Sometimes you'll see like the Spathophyllum sensation or like your typical Peace Lily that, you know, is often associated with like funerals and stuff. But this Peace Lily in particular, I think is honestly quite underrated. And when I got this plant, I mean, it was a tiny, tiny baby. And it's taken a while to get to this point, mostly because I've neglected it quite a bit. But honestly, it's so easy to take care of. It's super vocal. When it's thirsty, it lets you know. The whole plant just droops over, which makes it fantastic for beginners. And as you can see, it actually bloomed for me this week for the first time ever, <laughs> which I mean, Peace Lily Blooms, I'm not like particularly in love with or anything like that, but it still feels like affirmation to me as a plant mom that I'm doing the right thing. But yeah, if you're looking for like a plant that has a little bit of variegation, but is very easy to find, very common, and probably gonna be pretty affordable is my guess. Peace Lily Domino is your gal, <laughs> honestly. And it's nice cause again, like you don't have to worry about it getting like too long or too tall for your space in general. As it grows, it'll just get like a little bit more bushy. And eventually these guys do get quite big, but it takes a while to get there. So if space is your concern, I feel like this is a good plant for that. I think it can also do fairly well in a lot of different circumstances. I've seen people laud this as a low light plant, which I did have it in low light for a while and it grew a little bit, but I didn't love it either. It definitely wasn't thriving. So now I have it kind of offset from a south facing window. So it's getting more like bright to medium and direct light. I think it likes that a lot more, but it can survive in lower light, I think. Of course, as far as common plants go, I had to include some sort of trailing philodendron or pothos. And so I decided to go with my philodendron heteracium Brazil or philodendron Brazil. This is just like a classic trailing Hartley philodendron, but it does have like a little bit more pizzazz to it because it has some like yellow greenish variegation going on, which I think is very fun. Also, if it gets a lot of light, it can 
get a little bit sun stressed and appear like more peachy for a time. But yeah, honestly, I don't think that I've gone into a big box store and not seen some sort of Hartley philodendron. It's usually the Brazil or like the plain green Hartley philodendron. These guys are so, so easy to find in my experience. And they're usually really cheap too. Like I think that I got this plant for $8 at my local garden center a few years ago. And that was like in the midst of the big plant craze. Now, obviously plant prices change and stuff over the years, but I can't imagine that this has gotten that much more expensive or any, like, I, I don't know. I would be shocked if this were super expensive now because these are so common. But yeah, if you're looking for a super affordable and very nice and very easy plant this is your plant like this is such a good trailing plant in my experience i've propagated it a lot over the years it's super easy to propagate and share with friends or make new plants if you're new to propagating all you would have to do is cut it where there's a node so like right here that's a node the leaf meets the main stem so like this is the petiole of the leaf this is the main stem that place where they meet is a node so you cut here for example, in this part, you can even see that there's like a little aerial root popping out right there. See that little brown thing? Yeah, that's where you would cut it. So you'd also, you could cut here and here. And each one of those would, in theory, root up and make a new plant. So the easiest way to do that is to just stick it in a container of water. Then they grow roots. This is just like such an easy plant to propagate and share with people. So this is definitely one of my top recommendations for people that are new to plants and trying to figure out which ones they should try first. This is just so beginner friendly. And if you do make a mistake, they're really cheap and easy to replace. So yeah, if you like trailing plants like this, Definitely give this plant a try. This is my Maranta Lucunera erythronera, or my red-veined Maranta. And I just watered it, so it's gonna be dripping all over me this entire time. I would say, in general, I feel like rare plants, and you know, plants from the Marantaceae family, like Calathea, Gapertia, Maranta, Stromanthi, plants like that, you can find them, a lot of them, very easily at the big box store or at your local garden center. Like in my experience, these types of plants are quite common and quite affordable in general. Now the one downside is sometimes they are fairly easy to kill, especially for beginners. And part of that is that they are maybe a little bit more prone to pests than your average plant. And they don't like to dry out a lot. So if you let them dry out repeatedly, that really stresses them out. And it takes time for them to get used to your environment and acclimate to your environment. So they might go through a bit of a rough patch while they're getting used to your house. And you really have to just push through that rough patch and do your best to keep on loving on that plant. And then once you emerge on the other side, they're usually pretty good. Now, all that being said, I have quite a few plants that are like prayer plants that are in the Marantisia family in my collection because I'm actually quite a big fan of them. I feel like they tend to get a little bit of a bad rep in the community because so many people have been burned by them in the past, especially as beginner plant parents. However, I decided to only pick one to be the representative because this one is on my good side right now. Like of all of them, this is the one that keeps on catching my eye more recently. And for the record, I do see this one all the time, especially at Lowe's, I feel like, is the most common place that I tend to find this plant. And in my experience, this one is generally fairly easy going, especially on the spectrum of the Marantisi family. Now on the spectrum of all plants ever, that's debatable. It kind of depends on whether or not you have the touch, I guess, for Marantas, because some people really struggle with them. For some reason, they like me. It's a mystery. I don't really know what I do differently, to be quite honest with you. I think one factor is that I keep mine in ceramic pots, not terracotta, and I'm very careful to not let them dry out too much. And I think that that contributes a lot to my success. But anyways, onto the plant itself. Honestly, like, just look at it. That's all you have to do. Just look at it. Oh, what you look at this. Oh, he's so handsome. I was obsessed with this plant from the moment I started collecting houseplants and I was very eager to add it to my collection very early on. So I've had this plant for quite a while. I've propagated a few times. It's very easy to propagate in my experience. And overall, I mean, I'm a big fan of like reddish leaves and that sort of thing. So like, 
I personally love it a lot. I love the way that the leaves look. I think it's just gorgeous. If you prefer like a lime green look, there is the lemon lime Maranta that is just like this. But instead of red, there's like a really bright lime green going on. And that one I would say is like equally as common. I feel like it just kind of depends on your personal area and your big box store as to which one you're gonna find more often. It's kind of like, do you have the Vulpix or the Growlithe from Pokemon Red and Blue or whatever it is? Oh, I'm such a nerd. Okay, anyway, here's another philodendron. This is the philodendron summer glory and I almost didn't include this on the list mainly because in my mind I've never I didn't really think about this plant as a common plant but I've actually been seeing it in big box stores all the time recently and I've also seen it on YouTube videos when people go big box store plant shopping it feels like this is always pointed out it's always popping up so while this plant was not necessarily like one of the common or easily accessible plants from when I was new to house plants nowadays I feel like this is a very common plant. It's very easy to find. People are finding it for like $15 at Home Depot or whatever. But I got this plant for like closer to $30 at least. But I got it like right when it came out because this is a hybrid between the Gloriosum and I think some sort of like Macaulay's hybrid, like Macaulay's Finale or something like that. Which honestly, let's take a closer look at the leaves. I think it's such a beautiful plant. Like the newer leaves come in this more like rose gold color and then they, they you know fade down to a green like that and honestly yeah it's just a gorgeous plant i don't really know what else to say about it other than like i like it a lot and i feel like it's still to this day fairly underrated i think it got popular really really fast but it, it kind of had like a one of these things <laughs> where like it got really, really popular, but then they like overproduced it and oversaturated the market and then it plummeted in popularity because people kind of got sick of it really, really quickly. But I mean, I still really like it. And if you want a crawling philodendron that is more on the common side, which some people do grow these as climbing or self-heading philodendron, I think, but I personally grow as a crawling philodendron. I think it might just be versatile because it's a hybrid. But yeah, I mean, if you want to try out a crawling philodendron that is more accessible than say the philodendron mom, then this is your plant. <laughs> you can probably find it in a big box store. Oh, we're nearing the end. I think we are only going to talk about two more plants. <laughs> this is the Begonia Maculata Whiteyei. And when I was first getting into house plants, this definitely was regarded as more of a rare plant. But then Costa Farms got a hold of it and <laughs> then it exploded and it's everywhere. Kind of like the Syndapsis Trubii Moonlight. That's another one where that same thing happened where it was considered a little bit more rare or sought after. And then yeah, Costa Farms just came in strong with them, which I think is fine. Honestly, I'm all for plants being more accessible, but it is really interesting how the perception of plants can change so quickly. But anyway, this is a plant that I think oscillates a little bit between like really easy and really hard. Like sometimes it just likes you and thrives and other times it just doesn't. <laughs> We're sort of in a weird in-between spot, I think, because it's growing for me, but there's a few spots on the plant, like a few leaves that are dying off. And I'm like, ah, you know, that could look better. But in general, I think it's doing fairly well. I mean, like there's a new leaf right there. And I think it's really, really cute and pretty. I've had a lot of iterations of this plant. I mean, I've had it like huge and massive and grow super tall on me. I mean, I propagated it, I chopped it all up. And then at one point I had like 20 of these sitting around my house. And now I've whittled it back down to, I believe this is the only one that I have in my collection now because I gave away the rest. Uh, but anyway, this plant I see all the time at big box stores and they frankly look arguably better than this one does. I don't know, this one has a pretty unique look to it. I think the leaves like are a little bit on the smaller side. And has a lot more like yellowy orange tint to it compared to the ones that I tend to see from Costa Farms. Those ones tend to have like very deep, almost like bluish green leaves and very large leaves, which I love those ones. I think they're awesome. This one I happened to get from South Florida when I went and visited my mom a few years back. I think I actually got this like right when I started this plant YouTube channel. I have a really soft spot in my heart for this plant. This is definitely probably my favorite begonia out there, even though like that's kind of basic. I think this is the most commonly sought after begonia. It's the most popular begonia that people think of because I mean, it's a cane begonia. It's like, it has that angel wing shape to it, um, but it's, it's pretty common, pretty easy to find. And it's beautiful too. I mean, that cannot be said enough about it. Like 
Look at how cool those polka dots are. It's got the red backs to the leaves. Uh, it propagates so easily. It's ridiculous, at least for me it did. And when I was trying to think of like which plants are my favorite of all the common plants in my collection, I just had to include this one because I couldn't not include it. <laughs> this is my Rick Rack cactus. Wow. It is huge now. <laughs> I was a little bit hesitant to include this plant initially because I think for me, it took a while before I found this plant and I found it at like Groovy Plants Ranch down near Columbus, Ohio. So it was not that common when I was getting into plants or at least not in my area. But in the last year or so, I've seen them all over the place, especially at one of my local garden centers, they've got rows and rows of them. I've seen them in big box stores, kind of among all like the cacti and succulents and that sort of thing. So in general, I feel like these guys are pretty easy to find and I had to include it because, I mean, look at it. <laughs> I got this plant when it was so small by comparison to this and now it's just an absolute sprawling monster. I love it. <laughs> it's such a quirky and different plant. It's really refreshing compared to, you know, your normal like philodendron and leafy plants like my Maranta and Hoya and stuff like that. And it is a jungle cactus, which I personally really have a soft spot for any sort of jungle cactus or ripsalis, stuff like that. I love the way that they grow. I love the way that they feel. They're very like supple and funky. And yeah, I just love them. They're so easy to take care of, honestly. This I have pulled back slightly from a south facing window, so it does get pretty good light, but it's also very vocal when it comes to its needs. I mean, it'll start like wrinkling just a little bit, like the fronds here, and I just feel them and they're all, they kind of lose their turgidity, their firmness. So it's pretty easy to tell when it needs to be cared for. And boy, this is getting, a little bit heavy holding up here. So I'm gonna wrap it up really quickly. Overall, if you wanna try something different from the rest of the plants that I was talking about, like this one's definitely probably the most unique common plant that I have. I mean, I guess you could also try out like Peperomia and stuff. I feel like those often are common and fairly unique because a lot of people don't pick Peperomia, which is a little bit sad, but it's just the truth. But this one is so fun. I love it. Definitely recommend it if you're looking for something a little bit more out there. Well, that's it. How many plants did I even talk about? I don't know. I feel like I talked about quite a few, but I had a lot of fun kind of recognizing these plants. I got all of these plants pretty much a long time ago, which is so surreal for me. <laughs> but I've been doing this plant thing for a while now and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. But if you clicked on this video because you're new to plants, oh my goodness, welcome. <laughs> I am so happy that you're getting into plants. It's honestly such a fun hobby and whether you decide to pick out, you know, maybe you have like five plants in your house or you choose to let it expand and take up more real estate in your home and in your heart as I have. I mean, either way, welcome to the community and we're so glad that you're here. Actually, please comment down below if you are like relatively new to plants. I just love hearing about people just getting into the hobby because there's something so exciting and wonderful about that. If you're not new to plants and you just wanted to go down memory lane with me and be all nostalgic and be like, oh, these are fun common plants. Also, I'm glad that you watched this video and that you enjoyed it. So yeah, I hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye!